So here I've navigated to www.tinkercad.com and if you already have an account with Tinkercad you can just go ahead and sign in here. If you don't already have an account with Autodesk Tinkercad, here's the button to join now. Once you've signed into Tinkercad, you should be presented with this screen. If not, just click on the Tinkercad Home button here up in the top left hand corner and it will navigate you to the screen. Um, and the, what we want to do next is we're creating a new design. So you just want to hit this button here, blue button called Create New Design. And it'll take you to the Create New Design screen. You can see it's already given it a title, but you can change that. So if you click on it, it'll say uh, change name. And if you click on it, you can change the name to Dog Bone Tech. So the next thing that we want to do is go over here to the orange cylinder, left click on it and drag it and drop it onto the work plane in the middle of the screen. And if you see, if I click off of it, um, right click on my mouse and then scroll up, you can see that it is positioned directly on the base of the plane. Okay, so next what we want to do is we want to take a look at the white box here on top of the cylinder. We want to left click on that and we want to change the 20 to say 7. And what that's done is it's reduced the height of the cylinder from 20 to 7. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is click on one of these squares in the corner and change both of the boxes from 20 to 40. Like that. Okay, so the next step is to click on the cylinder and then on your computer, click Control C to copy and then Control V to paste. One, two, three copies so that we have a total of four cylinders. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm on the, the top top of my grid and I'm going to edit my snap grid from it, uh, the default was one millimeter. I'm going to change it to five millimeters so that it's easier uh, to lay my cylinders down. So now here I'm going to rearrange the cylinders so that they line up with each other but slightly overlap and then I'm going to do the same thing uh, to these two. I'm going to try to make sure that are roughly match on both sides so that they're roughly aligned here and there as well. Okay, next I'm going to take a box and I'm going to put it in the middle of my cylinders, like so. And I'm going to change the width and the length. So if I click on this box, change the width, the, sorry, the length, the length of the box to 50, and then I'm going to change the width, the width of the box from 20 to 40. Then what I'm going to do is change my perspective. And then I'm going to change this height of the cube from 20 to 7, like so. Now I'm going to switch back to the top, and I'm going to take my cube, and I'm going to reposition it so it's 
approximately equidistant between the cylinders. So now I'm looking at my cube and I'm looking at my cylinders and I think uh, the cylinders are too close in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on one of my cylinders and then I'm going to click the shift key and click on the one next to it. I'm just going to move it out just a little bit like so. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to click left click one cylinder and then shift left click the other and then just move it out just a bit just so that there is some overlap but not not as much overlap. I think, I think that's good. Yeah, that's good. And I'm just going to deselect them. The next thing that we're going to do is come over here to the basic shapes. I'm just going to scroll down until I find the tube. And then I'm going to cl left click on the tube and drag it over. I'm just going to put it here, sort of middle center, overlapping the cube. Um, and that's going to be sort of the ring to put this on the dog collar or the keychain or whatever we want to hang um, the dog boat tag off of. Now the next thing we want to do is take a look at the front and select the ring and then what we want to do is change the height of the ring to 7 like so. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is select all of the items on the workspace by basically click left clicking in the top left hand corner and just dragging a rectangle around all of the items in the workspace. And then I'm going to hit this button or control G which groups all of the objects that are on the work plane together into a group. And so now it's grouped all the objects together as one group. Okay, I'm going to just make sure that I'm on the top view, looking at it straight on, and then I'm going to go back down into my basic shapes, and here I'm looking for text, and I've found it, so I select text, so I'm just going to click on it and drop it right into the middle of the dog tag bone, like so. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to text where it says text and I'm going to change that to the name uh, of the pet so I'm going to pick name of pet and then as you can see here it changes the name of the dog bone tag uh, to the name that I've typed here in the text box okay and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make that box around the objects again and then I'm going to again group them together so that the object and the text are in the same grouping going to rotate it so you can see that the text is raised on the dog tag. So you'll be able to see when we print it out uh, that it's raised text on the dog tag. Okay, so this is kind of an enlarged dog tag um, because this work plane is the size of the 3D printer plate glass. But what we want to do is actually make it dog size. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the size of this uh, so that it's dog, approximately dog size. So I'm going to change the length to 35 and I'm going to change the height to 23 and I'm going to change this. I'm going to change this height here to 5. So that it's more dog sized. So obviously if your dog is bigger, your dog is smaller, you can resize this uh, to make to make the dog tag bigger or smaller uh, fitting your dog's size. So the next thing is you can change the color by left clicking here. But it doesn't really matter uh, whether you change the color or not because the color will be determined by whatever PLA color you have in your 3D printer. So I'm just going to leave this um, as orange, but I'm going to choose a different color of PLA to put in my 3D printer to print it out in. 
And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to export it to get it ready uh, to put into my Cura slicer before I 3D print it. So I'm going to hit export and it gives me some options. I can choose the type of file. Um, if I was doing laser cutting, I could choose SVG, but I'm just going to choose one of the ones that's suitable for the Cura software. And then as you can see, it's, it's downloading it as a zip file in the format that I've chosen. Right, so now what I'm going to do is go and open the Cura software. Let's make a Cura. File, open file, and here I'm going to go to my downloads and find the dog bone tag and the file, the OBJ file that I exported, which is called Tinker. And then you can see that the dog bone appears on the plate glass of the Ultimaker. This is this is the actual size that it's going to print out at. And if I hit the slice key, slice button, it says that it's going to take approximately 16 minutes to print this out on the 3D printer. And I can hit um, preview if I want to see what how it's going to print it out. You can see it's put a little bit of a layer underneath the tag, the, uh, the dog bone tag. And then if I want to save it, if I want to make changes to it, it's probably best to go back to Tinkercad and make them in Tinkercad, like if I wanted to make make it bigger, a bigger dog tag bow. But I, if I'm happy with it, I can just save it to the removable disc and then print it out on the 3D printer.